everybody. My name is Roz. I'm with Operation Save Our City. Um, and I'm in partner with the DEA working on an art project um, when it comes to um, talking about um, addiction and talking about um, the drug use that's happening across the country, but also how we can how we can our youth um, and how we can support our family members who do use drugs um, in a healthy way. Um, I want to back recap a little bit about what I did last week. Um, my art has always been about um, um, healing in the community, healing when it comes to those in active addiction or those suffering any kind of trauma in their life. So I use art in so many different ways, but particularly um, one on how to heal our community from many different traumas. So I want to recap real quick about what we've talked about last week, um, what project we worked on. So one of the things, one of our supplies that we needed to um, complete our project is a frame thing as a loom. Um, and we put notches on them. And we also have a thinner string uh, than the yarn to wrap around the loom. So I'm just gonna quickly, quickly recap so that we can gently go into our next um, phase of the project, Patches of Hope. So you're gonna put a knot on the end of your string, right? And we're gonna put it onto the loom, just like so, putting the knot, the knot behind and pulling, and then you're gonna wrap it around six times. And once you've wrapped it, you're gonna put another knot at the end of the notch of the loom. We've created two notches so that it makes it easy for us to weave in the yarn. So we gotta make sure that we wrap it six times and make sure we count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. So it has six lines on there. We're gonna knot it at the end and I think what works best with some of the string is if we tie it next to the other one so that it secures when we're when we're weaving and it doesn't come loose so it's kind of going to look like this six and then you're going to use this little piece here and tie it to the one next to it in the back and of Course. Let me rewind this again. For some reason, it didn't come out straight. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you can see him, but I have my lovely assistant patrolling the cat who's down on everything. So you might see a flying cat behind me. <laughs> He's uh, not used to being outside, but. For some reason, he followed me out. So uh, you might see him in the background jumping around. All right, so once we've secured that next to it, it's going to look like this. And then on the back, it's going to look just like this. Just a knot, just tying it to the other one. We've created the clusters already. So these clusters, I'm going to stand so you can see me a little bit better. Um, so the clusters, you're just going to tie them and you're just going to weave over, under, over, under, all the way across. And you're going to do that until we don't have any more yarn on this one patch here. Over, under, over, under, just like so. You're going to pull it all the way across. just like that. And then you're gonna do the same thing. You wanna make sure you go the opposite way when you're coming back, because if what happens is if you don't, you're gonna unravel what you've already completed. Just like I just did, let me show y'all. <laughs> All that work for nothing. 
Yeah, he is really interested in something behind this fence, so <laughs> chances are you might see a cat taking our art class this morning with us. His name is Patron. He's been around a very long time, probably since 2008. So he's a, he's he's been around. Um, let's see. Here we go. I'm having a hard time with this this morning. There we go. I'm not sure why this is not. Okay, here we go. So you get the gist. Over, under, over, under. So that's a recap of what we did last week. So now we're going to go to the next phase, which is the painting of the of the frame. So I chose yellow, but I have some other frames that maybe maybe we can do. We can do blue or we can do like stripes. Like I'll, I have some other colors here. So I'm going to add like maybe some blue. I have some blue. So we can add some color to this yellow here. You can add whatever it is you want to add. Um, just make sure that you leave enough space for whatever message you want to put on here. So I'm going to just put like some cute little dot here. Um, and next week we'll be working with some other things like maybe rhinestones, um, some wire to add to our piece. So you can add some dots to it, but make sure you leave plenty of, of space that you can write your message. So today I wanted to talk about um, how words matter. So um, and I want to touch a little bit on that this morning, how words are important and how they matter and how they can be hurtful. So we've got to be careful what, what words we use to describe a person, especially a person in addiction or a person um, in recovery or a person who's been affected by any kind of trauma. So we've got to be very careful on how we use our words. Um, one in particular word that I see used a lot where I live is um, addict or the word junkie or the word crackhead or all these things that that have stigma towards the people that we love um at least for for me i would rather someone not call my my family member a junkie or an addict or any of those words that you know that stigmatize people who use drugs um but the message is clearly for us you know not to have um folks or even young kids use drugs to begin with um, because obviously when we see across the nation there's a lot of people who are addicted to opiates and all these other drugs which can call cause havoc in one's family and one's life um, so we definitely want to make sure that um, that we talk about you know not using drugs and not being peer pressure into using drugs, but we want to be realistic and talk about the folks that we have in our lives that are currently using drugs. Um, and because they're using drugs, that doesn't necessarily make them a bad person. It just makes them a person who's struggling with something, struggling with an addiction. And we want to be able to show that person love and compassion and empathy, and all, of these, all of these things that come with loving someone, regardless of what decisions they've made in their life. We're trying not to at least for me, um, that was the flying cat I talked about. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, really, I really want to talk about um, just meeting people exactly way, where they are in their life and um, just loving on them regardless until they're ready to go into some kind of treatment. But until then, you know, our job as human beings, I think, is just, just meet people where they are, show them love and compassion 
and watch the words that we use. Um, so the words that I, I wanted to, to kind of talk about today, again, is compassion and empathy and what the difference between compassion and empathy is. So I'm going to read um, the thing that, that I printed um, to share a little bit about what um, compassion and empathy and what the difference between those are. Um, so uh, let's go into the definition. The definition um what's the difference between empathy compassion and empathy compassion is the ability to feel for others for others living for another living being um so empathy is the ability to not only understand other others feelings but also to become one with the person's distress to put yourself in their shoes and imagine what they're going through in that situation and this is exactly what what I want to really, really focus on because I feel like when we go around and we talk to people who use drugs or we see people who use drugs, a lot of times people have already um, in their minds defined who that person is. They've already passed judgment on that person, not knowing what their story is or even why they're in the situation that they're in. Um, for me, I have always, I've, I've been around people who use drugs all my life, and I know the destruction is caused within a person, um, health-wise and physically and mentally, um, but I also know that they need support, just like with any other thing that happens in life. We need love, we need support, um, and, and just showing people kindness can really, really go a long way. So again, I, I wanna go back into, um, because I really want to focus on what compassion and what, what empathy is. So I'm going to read, again, what compassion is. Compassion is the ability to feel for others, for another living being. Um, that's so important. That's so important because so many times people are struggling with things in their life. And, you know, we don't want to pass judgment, but we just want to love on people. We just want to be kind to one another. And just, that's just what it's about. You know, you want to, you want to be treated as such. So, you know, what you put out is what you receive. So empathy is the ability to not only understand others' feelings, but also to become one that person who's distressed and put yourself in their shoes and imagine what they're going through in that situation. So for instance, you see someone, let's say, using drugs and they're really high. Instead of passing judgment and saying, oh, that addict or that junkie, that Let's try to figure out what happened to that person, why they're in the situation they're in. Try to try to empathize with them and say, okay, okay, I've been struggling too with some stuff, you know. So I know maybe not exactly how you feel, but I know what it feels like to be to struggle. I know what it feels like to, to try to get away from pain. So a lot of times we use art as a way to to heal some of that trauma. So that's what we're working on today as well. Um, how to, how when we're going through stuff, whether it's in school, whether it's um, not having, not being as close to our friends, like we're used, like maybe when the kids are graduating and they're going to another grade, got a little bit of separation, anxiety, all these things, art comes a long way. You know, you could really, really use art to, to cope with some of that, some of that stress. I'm trying to my brush here. So let's go back into the, the art piece of it. Um, so I created these little, you know, these little dots, um, made, made the little dots. I think rhinestones will really look cute on this right now, but I don't have it. That'll be next week's addition to this piece. Um, and since we're talking about words, I'm gonna put on, on my piece here words matter and you can choose to put whatever message you want onto your piece um, i'm gonna put with a sharpie because it's easier right now and we want to make sure we can still work and the stuff is already dry so you can use any kind you can use bubble letters, you can use, um, you can just write it in, you can do cursive, you can do whatever you want on your piece. 
Um, I'm just going to put words matter on here. And again, you know, making sure that, you know, when you're writing this piece, you're doing it with intention and with the, with the mindset that you want someone else to get an amazing message, a positive message, something that's going to carry them, them through the day. I feel like when you put pieces like this throughout public spaces, it really speaks value. So, um, and people are watching, people are watching what you're creating, the energy of what you create, it can really, really make somebody's day. You know, I feel like when I sit in a classroom or in an art studio with, with folks who are struggling with stuff, you'd be amazed with the art that they create. Um, from their life experiences. And this can be, this can be something you can create in your home for your parents or for, or for yourself or for your friends. So let's see. All right, so I put words matter. Now I have another tag um, that I wanna write a message on. I kind of did, this is why I said the paints like, so I'm gonna, I'll put green, but I'm gonna like add black to it because it seems like it's so bland right now. We want things that really pop, especially with this yellow. Bright colors are always happy. So if you're feeling happy, go ahead and put some orange, some bright yellow, anything bright that's gonna really stand out. Maybe some hearts. Mm, yeah, hearts are all right. Do some hearts on here. I think I'd rather use paint for the heart. So again, you can really, really use anything, anything, anything to um to weave. I know last week we talked about the yarn. Uh, we can use wire. We can use aluminum foil. You can use just about anything to weave which I might, I might grab some aluminum foil for you guys and, and show you how to, that only takes about a minute or so to do. Because you have to roll the aluminum foil. So here's my little heart here. So again, you want to make sure that your message is pos positive and your colors are bright, you know? Sometimes our situations are so dark that you just, people just need color. Color is everything. Different kinds of material is everything. Be creative, get, get anything in your house. You can even use, if you have vine, like dried up vine from outside, like if, if you have vine, old vine growing, and it's kind of dying a little bit, you can use vine as well. So here's, here's that. It's not quite dry yet. So you're gonna use a piece that you, you did last week, the weaving piece you did last week, and you can, you can either glue it or you can use a, a push pen. So I am gonna use a push pen um, and you could even get fancy with these. So you can paint these gold if you want. Or you can add, you can wrap it in yarn so it can blend with whatever piece you've already created. But I'm just going to glue it on, um, pin it on here. And... And hopefully it doesn't... Uh, it's not dry yet but anyway so that's kind of what it would look like I'm trying to make sure it doesn't touch the heart the heart's not dry yet so again you know these colors are kind of different so if you want to get like yellow yarn to match your yellow frame or if you want to get um, aluminum foil with with white that really looks good too 
So I'm going to grab the aluminum foil very, it's going to take me two seconds. And um, again, while I'm gone for the two seconds, figure out what words you want to put on your frame. Or if you haven't already painted your frame, go ahead and start painting your frame, whatever color. Just keep in mind that whatever yarn you've already, you already have, that's going to match. See if you want it to match up or not. If you don't want to make it match, that's fine too. Um, just, you know, if you want it to be uniform, whatever it is you want to do. Um, there's no right or wrong way to, to putting the colors together or it's just however you're feeling. I'm going to grab that aluminum foil and I'm going to start and I'm going to bring it out here and start rolling it so that I can show you how we, you can use any item to weave a piece. Any, I mean, you can get the ones that are already, you can get the ones that are really, really thin, or you can get one that's, that's um, heavy duty, whichever one. I use the thin ones, one because they're easier too. So you cut yourself a big piece, just like that. And again, you can use anything. You can still use the yarn. You can still use whatever it is you want to use. So this one right here, you're just going to roll it. You just roll it, pretty simple. Roll it, and then you can cut the rack. That way you have like two pieces. There you go. And smash it up. And what would really look nice too, if you wanted to get, if you wanted to be like real fancy, <laughs> you can color the frame. You can color the frame gold too. Like if you wanted to put stuff in your room, make sure I have the right, yeah. And again, the same thing, you're gonna weave it over, under, over, under. The same, the same exact way you would do the yarn it's the same way you would do the, the aluminum foil. But make sure you, you like ball it up so that it doesn't get caught in the, um, you know, in the, in the string. So again, this is, you know, something that, that you can do while sitting on your bed. If you're, you know, if you're upset about something, grab something that you can make a loom out of I'm trying to figure out why this, there we go. Got it. Same, same thing. Make sure you crunch it up too, so that you got, you have some space. So does anybody have any questions for me? If you're unsure about anything, All right. So this is the same thing, you know, you're just going to keep weaving it in. Just like that. You're going to grab your other piece. And you're going to do the same thing with it. You're going to ball it up. Oh, wait a minute. Going to roll it. So in between like maybe the second row, second or third row, you can change up. Like after this, after I weave this one in, I'm gonna add like maybe a red, a red piece of yarn. So that way it looks like, you know, we got, we got different textures, different colors. There we go. 
And again, you're going to go with over, under, over, under, same thing. And you can do this with wire too. You can do this with, um, with wire. You can do this with um, pipe cleaner. And pipe cleaners come in so many different colors that you can almost just really do, you know, a bunch of maybe like a hundred different pipe cleaners. And that looks really, really beautiful. I kind of, I kind of like that. Well, I like colors. I like a lot of colors. So you're going to keep weaving over, under, over, under. So when I'm thinking about, um, and maybe we can focus on, since we're talking about words, we can focus on words that, 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 um, that we would say to someone, let's say we, we come across someone who's really struggling or someone um, that we know is, is maybe someone who uses drugs. Um, what are kind words that we can say to that person? What are things that we can, we can do to uplift that person, um, to make, maybe even help that person, um, you know, even if you'd be surprised again with words can do, you know, maybe that person with your kind words can, can lead someone into recovery. Um, telling that person, that person matters, um, is important despite their struggles, you know, that they're important to us. We want to really, really try to use our words carefully and make sure we show people that no matter what, that we still love them. Um, they're human beings just like we are. And I know that they're struggling, but, you know, we also want to be intentional with it and also say, you know, this is, this is the effects of what happens when someone uses drugs. This is why I'm so important that, that we're not peer pressured into, into, um, doing drugs or especially, um, for, for you young folks who, um, a lot of times we weed is something that folks talk about and we got to be very careful with weed because um that's even though people say that weed comes from a plant and all of those things we don't know what people are putting in the in this stuff and potential potentially the stuff that you are smoking can be deadly um right now you know there's a lot of fentanyl which is the drug I'm, I'm not sure, I'm sure you guys know that Michael Jackson died of a fentanyl overdose. Fentanyl is an early drug that you can possibly imagine. And you don't know um, what this person who are selling you put in their drugs, you know, and what happens is that you can potentially yourself go into, into overdose and it, it could kill you. So you want to be careful um, that you're not pressured into doing something you, you, um, you shouldn't be doing so just you know but i don't want to be naive to think that you don't know anybody who smokes weed or you don't know anybody to do drugs um it doesn't mean that because you know someone who does it doesn't mean that you should do it yourself you know that's we're going to try to um be smart about that and you know be careful that we don't start a habit that can take take its toll on your body can ultimately kill you and can put you into a state of addiction. And now you have yourself another problem. You know, we want to be sure that, that, that uh, we're making right choices. Okay. So, okay. So this is, this is what it's looking like. So it's coming together. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another aluminum foil. So that way I'll have, this, this aluminum foil, the yarn, and the aluminum foil. And again, you know, once we're done, like I'm thinking maybe I can paint my frame red to kind of go with this, with this color here. This is not quite red, but to go with that there. So drug use, I tell you, you know, it can, when people decide that they want to use drugs, um, a lot of folks don't realize that um, 
how fast addiction can happen. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, and that's why we're talking about this topic about addiction because you can you can start doing something and say, oh, I'm just gonna try it. There's no way that that I'm gonna be addicted because I've only tried it once and that's just not the case, you know. Uh, drugs are very powerful, they're very dangerous, they can cause havoc in your entire life and cause you to do things that make decisions that are not rational. So, and you may think you may have control over a situation and you don't. Say you're sitting in a group with your friends and somebody's passing, passing a blunt around. Again, you don't know what's in that blunt and you don't know what kind of weed that is. And the chances are that it may not even be weed. It may be some other stuff that your body's not even used to. This is why I, I really, really want to emphasize um, how we want you to stay away from drugs, but we also don't want to be naive and say that we don't have family members or we don't know anyone who uses drugs. So I really, really need to emphasize on that. And just, again, you're going to be sitting in a group full of people and you just don't know what's going around, you know? So don't be peer pressured into doing anything you don't want to do. Don't be peer pressured into into that kind of lifestyle because it can ultimately end you up in somebody's ER or somebody's ventilator and on the other end of receiving Narcan. I'm going to explain to you what Narcan is. And then you might have seen this in like TV shows and you might have heard of it on the street or so Narcan is a drug that reverses overdoses. So this drug, if someone is suffering from an overdose and they've taken too many drugs what's going to happen is that they have to give you narcan in order to reverse the effects of that drug that you've taken whether it's fentanyl whether it's heroin whether it's percocet it works only on opiates so so this drug is so powerful that it would help you come back to life however it may help you come back to life but if you're have if you're addicted to this drug that you've taken, now you have a long road of recovery ahead. So we're trying to prevent that. We're trying to prevent you having to, to even step into the life of, of drug use and, and all of those things. Um, it, re it requires so many years of, of, of treatment and it doesn't mean that once your treatment is over, you're not in recovery because you're gonna forever be in recovery. So I want to make make that clear. And you're always going to be tempted to, to use drugs. And this is why if we can prevent you from using drugs initially, that would really, you know, that would really help you out. So again, let's go back to the Narcan. So um, you might have heard of it. You know, it, it, again, it's a drug. It's something that it, you can put it in your nose as a nasal. It's almost like a flow nasal or they have an intermuscular drug, uh, needle. Um, what's going around now is the, the, the spray. And um, I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people knocking on death's door and having to use Narcan. Um, in fact, I've probably reversed 430 overdoses in my community. It's a lot. It's a lot for a person who's not an EMS worker, it's a lot for a person who is not uh, a fireman or a police police officer. I am simply a resident who lives in a neighborhood that primarily is dealing with the heroin crisis. Um, and in the community of Kensington, we are like in the, in the center of it. We're like, you know, the heroin capital of the world is what they call um, Kensington. That's unfortunate because although we have people who use heroin, we also have really, really amazing people who are just struggling. Um, we have doctors, uh, we have nurses, we have um, politicians who are now addicted to these drugs. And this is why I say it could affect anyone, any class. It doesn't matter if you're rich, you're poor, 
you're, you know, you have, you have a degree, you don't have a degree, it doesn't matter. So you're not exempt from getting hooked on drugs, which is why I say, don't pick it up to begin with. You know, I've seen many, many young faces who come here initially just to try it, and now they're stuck here. And now it takes a community, um, my community, to raise someone else's kids who are stuck here because the drugs are just that powerful in how people get addicted to them. And we want to make sure that you're not put in a situation where someone is asking you to try something and it will potentially kill you. So if we can just avoid even wanting to try it, um, you know, that would be, that would be a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. But then again, you know, let's, let's go back to, to people who do use drugs. We still want to show them love and compassion and try to be there for our fellow human being and, you know, encourage them, remind them that they're loved um, despite of their situation. We still love them and we hope that they can get better. And, and that's the kind of love that we need to have for all, for all people, you know? We want to be able to, um, you know, I believe that the energy you put out is the energy you would receive. And, and I want to be able to just show love to all our people. What do you guys think? Look at it. It's coming together. I am going to weave another piece in because I thought that I was going to have no room, but I do. Over, under, over, under, same, same, same way. And then I'm going to cut it. And I think I'm going to paint, um, paint one of the looms red so that I'm going to put it in the sun over there. So by the time we come back for our, I think we have time to put this, attach it to the, to the red. Hopefully it dries in like five minutes. So does anybody have any questions for me so far? On maybe weaving, maybe any, any um, questions you may have about the drug Narcan. Uh, maybe you have any questions about my experience with living with, um, with being around folks in active addiction. Any questions is, is welcome. Okay. Alrighty. All right. So we're almost done this piece and it looks like I'm not going to be able to fit the whole, oh, wait a minute. No, I'm not going to be able to fit the whole thing in here. Because i got to be able to tie it, tie it up. So, and, and next week, too, and I'm going to put this in my notes. Because I want to show you guys something, too. So, because I'm going to, I want to keep talking about the dangers of of using I, I, even though i know that um we may know folks who use in our life maybe a brother a sister or auntie a cousin that everybody talks about oh so and so's coming over and they were like oh he's coming over and and you know i've i've had that happen in my family where people are like oh so and so's coming over so we got a um stigma this is what i talk about stigma so we got to put our purses away. Listen, we've, I've had people in my own family stigmatize people in the family. So again, you know, words, words are, words mean, words mean a lot. So we got to be careful what words we're using. Um, show people love, no matter, despite of what their situation is. But I want to talk about the amount of lives that, that I've seen been affected by drug use. And these are just the people that um, I've administered Narcan to. Um, I want to share one story in particular. Um, and it was a high schooler. And I remember this was last year. 
and I hope this is not, I don't, I don't believe it's too graphic, but I think it needs to be talked about. Um, now this was last year and it was the very first day of school, the very first day of school, and it was dismissal. We're on the Market Line L station going towards Tayoga. And I remember getting on the train and seeing this man who was uh, unresponsive, right? He was unresponsive. His skin was kind of blue. I knew automatically what that was. I knew this person was overdosing and that we needed to, I needed to administer Narcan. However, I'm on the train packed full of high school students. And I'm a, I'm a little bit afraid. So I remember lifting this guy up. I'm not sure how I did it because this guy was super big. And he was like three times bigger than me. Somehow I got this guy off the chair and I proceeded to administer Narcan and give this guy rescue breath. And I remember giving him one dose at first and, and I have a pulse ox, so I realized that he didn't have a heartbeat. I began to do CPR and give him uh, mouth to mouth with a face shield, of course, um, and, and working on him for about 20 minutes. After four Narcans and I was exhausted, I remember watching this high school student come up to me and say, I know, I've learned how to do CPR, how can I help? And I was so exhausted and I was sweating and I was overwhelmed and crying because I didn't believe this guy was gonna come back. But the most bravest thing I seen was this high schooler offered to help and she did because I was exhausted and the guy didn't make it. However, I think about the trauma of what this young lady has seen, like the effects of it. The, the fact that that image will never leave her mind. And this is why we talk about, you know, that we want people to be safe. We wanna educate people on not using drugs, but sometimes people, kids are just exposed to it, just like this young lady was, but she was so brave uh, she didn't pass judgment. She cared enough about this individual to just help, despite the fact that she knew this person used drugs. But the most beautiful thing that happened, and I'm used to being in a community that really stigmatized those who use drugs. I'm also used to um, people who treat people who use drugs differently. And the most special moment that I can remember that was so touching, and it stays with me every waking moment of my life, is. Uh, when that person was clearly not alive, I, I remember the train conductor, the EMS worker, the SEPTA police, the Philadelphia police, and the firemen were all on this car, this train car, and someone bowed their head and like said a quick prayer, and I can hear it even though it's emotional. But then I can open my eyes for a second and I can see everyone on that train paying the respect to someone who didn't, who they didn't know. And I mean, that was, that was really special because that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen very often. So if, if we can have moments like that in society where we don't stigmatize those, but we just try to try to save them, it can be so beautiful and everlasting moment that not only stayed in my mind, but stayed in the mind of that, that teenager who offered to help um, and who did help with no questions. And this is what I talk about when people need to show compassion and empathy. And, and despite, despite people's thought about people who use drugs, that no matter what, that we have to, we have to show love, we have to show compassion, and we just have to be there for our fellow human being, um, despite of the stigmas around people who use drugs. But let's make this clear, you know, we don't want to be the ones to, at least I don't want to be the one to reverse another teenager or someone who had no clue um, what they were smoking 
although they were told they were smoking maybe weed, but in fact it had fit on it. So we're going to make smart choices and we're going to make sure that the peer pressure doesn't cause us to make the wrong choices and we're going to not do drugs and we're just going to support and be empathetic and sympathetic and all of these things for people who are struggling without passing judgment you know so all right so this piece is done so that is this piece so that piece is done with aluminum just aluminum foil i think i need to smash that part yes all right so that one is done so i think i think what i'm gonna do uh i have about five more minutes so we could we could actually make it match and paint this red we can make this thing match a little bit of color coordinating although i like i do like a whole lot of color but i just wanted to make it match for some reason so that's what we'll do sometimes you just gotta go with what you're feeling and i am feeling like i'm gonna paint this red Red. It's probably not going to be dry, however. Um, you get the idea. And again, like you could really do a lot. And these frames only cost a dollar. So you can drill holes. You can drill holes and just and string it from each corner like that and add your pieces in the center or just to put it inside a really, really big frame. I mean, you can do so much with this. You can, if you get like 12 frames, you can cover a really, really big wall space. So hopefully we can get a piece for the camp, the camp walls, or maybe the office of the DEA would be nice. That would be nice. All right, wait a minute. All right. I'm going to get the edges, but. There we go. All right. So, oh. get the top. And again, you want to be real faith to get some rhinestones? which I'll be adding to the class next week because, you know, every now and then a girl like diamond, <laughs> baby rhinestone. Um, yeah, so I think it'll look really cute. Poor guy, whoever, whoever likes rhinestone, whatever, whatever works. All right, and all right. I'm making more of a, I'm so not, I'm so used to painting flat, but I want you guys to see it that, that I'm making more of a mess. <laughs> I'm making more of a mess. Well, surprisingly, our lovely assistant, Patron McCann, did not jump on the table. He did, however, jump on the table back here and knock some things down, but he would have made a lovely, guest appearance <laughs> on the art class. Um, all right, let's see. This is really not, I don't know. So does you guys have any questions for me so far? Are you guys good? Am, am I clear on on all of the points that I've made as far as Narcan, as far as drug use, and why we shouldn't do it. All right, I think I'm going to paint the center. I might change the background to this at some point, but right now, for the sake of time, I'm just going to paint the center so it matches.
There's something about painting. It's kind of relaxing. <clears throat> it's kind of relaxing to me. I hope it's relaxing for you as it is for me. If I'm ever going too fast on a certain step, let me know. Um, yeah, let me know. Or I'm going to be putting some videos up on the Operation Save Our City Facebook page if you're interested. I think I'll do that right after I'm done this class. So people can know how to practice a little bit of self-care. That's always important. All right. Now I am looking for... Ah, got it. Little push pen. So we got the push pen. Mm, I think I'm going to cut this off. Cut this knot. I kind of like the knots, but sometimes it's too many knots. All right, here we go. Got the push pen in. And our piece is made. There is that piece. We can put a positive message up here, down here, which I think I'm going to put on this one. Is it dry? On this one, I'm just going to put love. And then I could use one of these tags and attach a tag on the bottom using a little piece of string, add a positive message, and this piece is done. And you can add whatever. You know, you can add rhyme songs, like I said before. You can add whatever, whatever you want. Whatever you think works. And then here, I think I'll put There you go. So I'll put a message here, put love here, the piece here, and that's it. I think my tag definitely needed to be a little smaller. More like this. You see the difference? This is a little this, this is a little big, but um yeah. So you get the gist. It's kind of positive messages, pieces all over. Um, sharing love, and that's pretty much it. So thanks for being a part of the class. I'll see you guys next week. We're going to be adding some additional stuff to our pieces, and I appreciate you all. Remember, the words really matter. Um, and just, again, compassion and empathy is everything. So thank you guys for joining the class.